Right then, ladies and gentlemen, for our first presentation this morning, we've got Becky who's going to show us some practical planting. Becky! Thank you. But well, yes, thank you very much for all coming. It's an amazing number of you who have sort of put plants first before the railways. So that's, um, I'm going to demonstrate in sync because that's like a miniature version of your garden railway, perhaps. And if you haven't got one, maybe you could start off with the sink because um, it's the same sort of idea. So I'm going to expertly lay the track um, like that. And in here I've got some nice compost and some grit. Um, and really the, your first consideration before you do any planting or anything is to sort of know your soil a little bit and have a bit of an understanding because you could spend an awful lot of money on plants otherwise and they'll die in front of you because they're not suited to the conditions you're putting them in. So, because a lot of alpines are really suitable for a garden railway because they've got small leaves and small flowers, as they do flower, um, they, alpine plants, they grow in the mountains, on rocks, they need really good drainage. Not necessarily heat, uh, they like sun, um, but drainage is really important. If you've got a heavy clay soil, you know, you, they're going to really struggle. Um, so if you do have a heavy clay soil, you want to improve the soil by adding compost, homemade compost or bought compost and adding lots of grit. I don't know if you can see there's grit in here. So the grit in the, in the mix as well and then I've got some grit to add later as well. So that's the first thing to start off with is in, uh, improving certainly the soil around where you're going to do your planting if uh, nowhere else. Um, I'm going to put a couple of rocks in maybe. I might move them around later just to add a bit of scenery. Well, I've no idea where I'm going to put anything at the moment, but uh, we'll just go with the flow. So, what I always suggest for the, when you start is, let's imagine you want a blank canvas. Most of us don't actually start with that, but you want to give your railway a little bit of structure first, which means putting some sort of miniature shrubs and trees in. And of course we all think of conifers when we think of um, garden railways, because they're so ideally suited. But there are lots of other things as well. Um, and the key thing is to read the label when you, when you go looking. And Bodium Nursery have got a fantastic display. It's like a sweet shop out there. Um, and you want to read the label. All the plants there are suited. But when you go to a garden centre, you can have, see tiny little conifers and shrubs. And think, oh, that's perfect. But unless you've read that label, you may discover that in a year or two, it's a, you know three metres high. So no, it's not necessarily suitable. So before you get tempted, read that label and if there isn't um, information on the label go and find somebody and ask they've usually got books in the garden center that you can look things up but i'm going to show you just a, a selection here is a conifer i was brought this morning by christine very kindly which is like a miniature pine and i know that that will it's uh, called elkins dwarf so the name already tells me it's likely to stay very small and the cones will be very small um, can you still hear me? Yes. <laughs> and th this one has um, also had some of its lower little branches removed to give it a trunk. And that's a little trick you can do with a perfectly ordinary conifer and so on. To make it look more miniature is to give it a trunk just by removing the um, lower, lower branches. Now this, this is not a conifer. It's uh, very familiar to those of you who do railway gardening already. And it's uh, the Nisera, Nitida. The Gesson's Gold, which I bang on about in the book an awful lot, and we made a tunnel from and so on. And it takes cuttings very easily, and you can see it's perfect, it's tiny leaves. It's actually a type of honeysuckle, you wouldn't think it, would you? And it, it can have, if you leave it to grow, have really, really tiny flowers as well. But it makes um, a perfect plant for the garden railway. You can get a green variety as well, which is um, faster growing. And somebody um, in, in the book has got a whole railway with this Lanisera. But this particular Lanisera has been sort of bonsai, its roots have been cut and it's been trimmed and it makes a really nice miniature tree. The thing is with the Lanisera, which is a good and a bad point, is it grows very rapidly. I mean, it doesn't mean to say it necessarily shoots up that rapidly, fairly rapidly, but you know, it, you'll get bits sticking out and you have to just keep trimming it and then put those trimmings in a pot and you've got a new tree. Um, so although, you know, you could say it's got the disadvantage of growing quickly, it's, it can also be an advantage. But put like that, and that's, you can buy Lanisera very, very cheaply in garden centres. 
but not obviously created a, like a little tree like that. Um, but you can do your own and you can make cuttings and have them forevermore really. So that, that is a perfect plant. I think if somebody said to me, well, just one plant, that's all I'm allowed, that would be the, probably the one I would have, and it is evergreen. Um, this is um, another one, this is, which has been sort of bonsai. It looks like a miniature apple tree, doesn't it? And it has little white flowers um, as well in the spring. And it's a catoniaster, which comes in all sorts of shapes and forms, and it's a spreading uh, plant, but this one grows a bit upright and then it will spread out. Um, and again, it moves the lower bit, the leaves and little branches that come to make it into like a little miniature apple tree. Basically, you know, uh, if a plant is doing something you don't want it to, then make it do what you want it to. And if it dies, okay, it dies. But, uh, you know, don't think, oh, it's all kind of funny shape. Well, make it into the shape you want it. You know, keep, keep trimming it and use the trimmings. Um, this is a this is a privet, but it's a golden privet, and it's a, one that grows very slowly and dwarf. This is an actual fact of cutting I took uh, from one that I've bought, and it makes uh, it's been evergreen this year, but in the cold winter it would, it might lose its leaves. Now I'm probably going to start taking these little bits off, uh, or certainly that lower one, just to keep it looking like a tree, and then I can use those little pieces to make cuttings of as well. So that's something that's not a conifer, but makes a nice tree shape. What is that one called? Uh, this is a, a privet. It's a golden, a golden privet. It's actually in the book. Um, I think it's called lemon, lemon and Lime. It's called, you know, it's not very commonly found. When I find these things, I sort of grab them. And uh, this one is um, a berberist. Do you know berberist? Very spiky. And again, it's being sort of trained in to make a little tree. Now, this is really spiky, so although it makes a lovely tree, you'd have to be, you know, really think carefully about where you're going to put that. And unless you're going to get complaints from the uh, chief engineer, you're going to have to not put it right next to where the trains are running because, it, you know, it can be quite vicious. So I wouldn't put it there, for example. Um, but it could be in the background. So that's, a, that's another nice one that Bodhi have got. Now, I've, I've caught sight of this one, which is a miniature larch which is, an, in fact, a um, deciduous conifer. It loses its leaves in the autumn, and you'll, you'll be used to the, the very large larch trees, but this one, it tells me, Nana, it's got at the end of its name, that means it's going to be small, um, and it's a dwarf Japanese larch. It goes up to 45 centimetres, 60 centimetres. Usually they give you within 10 years, but then I've read, it says, it, uh, it, Full sun to partial shade prefers wet, acid soil. Our soil isn't wet and it's not acidic. So I'd be wasting my money if I went and bought that one, sadly, much as I would like it, because uh, it's just not suited to my growing conditions. So, you know, you can, uh, it really is worth reading the label. And personally, I don't think it's um, worth fighting against nature, if you like. If your environment isn't the right one for a plant, okay, you can artificially make it right for a little while, but it'll soon start sulking and not be happy. Uh, so try and choose plants that are suited. Now this is a really tiny conifer uh, called Tiny Temple, which I don't know is a new one, but it's really, really, really small. So it makes almost like a little shrub rather than a tree shape. So depending on what you want. And that, those are all the new green, green shoots there. And this is myrtle. Um, you can get variegated myrtle, which is a herb and has nice smelling leaves. And this can grow quite big, but you can keep trimming it. And again, you can give it a trunk. You can see how potentially you could start uh, making that one into a little tree. The only disadvantage with myrtle is that it can succumb in a really hard winter. You know, the ones that we've had, not this year, but previous years. Mine has <coughs> suffered a bit, but it has recovered. But uh, that's another nice one that you can do. So let's see which one shall we put in. I think I might put in... I'll put my myrtle in because that actually is... Oh no, I won't. I'm going to put my pine, which was bought for me. Put that one in there. Now, I'm just shoving the pot in the hole. Now, when you come to plant something, first thing you want to do is to give your plant a really good soak in a bucket of water, at least for an hour. It's much better to do that than to 
fill the hole with water, take it out of its pot and put it in. It, make sure it's really soaked and then the roots can get going. So you make your hole with your spade or whatever. I've got polystyrene at the bottom here, which you won't have. But that's to make sure it's not filled with soil, which makes it heavy. And then I'll put some bone meal in, which helps the roots to establish. And if my soil's not particularly good, I might put a mixture of compost and grit in. Every time you plant something, if your soil's not wonderful, give a little treat to the soil and, you know, have compost and grit, and gradually your soil will improve. So I would take this out of the pot, unless I wanted to restrict its roots. You can actually put the pot in. You know, some people do that. They come back a few years later and discover all this pot's all shredded in the in the ground, it's burst out. But it, it can help contain some things. And, or if you're not quite sure, do I really want it there or not, maybe just put it in its pot, and then if you decide no, you can take it out more easily. So uh, to take that out, I'm not going to, because I don't want to plant it now, but I might take this, this little thing out, which looks a little bit weedy, but actually, um, come the summer, we'll be fine. This is actually a succulent, it's not really a tree, but I'm just going to use it to demonstrate taking things out of the pot. Uh, what you don't want to do, I do teach children a bit with gardening and I can tell you they go grab like this and the poor thing comes off with the head off and no roots are left in the pot. So that's not the way to take things out of a pot. You want to sort of pat it or squeeze it and like that and then grab, then you put it in like that and hopefully it's all in one piece. And if you've got a label, you know, you might want to put the label in there for a little while just to remind yourself of what it is. But I wouldn't keep labels in all the time because it will look funny. You'll find in photographs of the garden rolling if you've got labels everywhere. So I've just put that in. I could have put a, you know, probably a, if I'd had a tall conifer, that might have been better. But that's a sort of tree and it will grows quite quickly. This garden has lovely white flowers in the summer. And, um, but it's very fragile. And if uh, somebody, and their enthusiasm to repair the engine or push the engine or whatever knocks a bit off don't get stressed because you can just take a bit off and push it in somewhere else and it will grow roots very very easily and become a new plant so that's a really that's crassula that's called so that's some structure let's have another one which i'll use the myrtle maybe because that's not one of bodium's plants that's one of mine i tend to use my hands well soaked for an hour or so, put in bone meal, squeeze the pot, and then you can see if it's got a good root system. I'm going to take the label out. Sorry to all the um, railway engineers that I'm getting soil on the track, but. I wouldn't do that in for real. Okay, there we go. Sorry, Becky, what was that one called? This is myrtle. Myrtle. Okay. And that's a that's a herb. Right, so when you've got your structure in, you might also want to consider what's behind your railway, and I think that comes across as important when you're actually doing your photographs and so on. You look at the photograph and think, oh god, you know, there's there's a horrible fence there with this uh, great big leaf plant uh, climbing up it or whatever, that doesn't look very good. So you might want to think about having a miniature hedge behind your railway to make a really nice backdrop to it. But that's, um, you know, that will depend on you and what's in your garden already and what you're allowed to do and so forth. And of course, they don't have to be so miniature either. At Beckenscott, I don't know how many of you been to Beckenscott, which is absolutely brilliant. If you want inspiration, go there. The gardeners are fantastic there. And they've got huge, like, Lady Avenue um, shrubs and so on, which we all know are neighbours, enemies and so on. But they do make a wonderful hedge, and you can keep them relatively short. And, you know, for a backdrop for your railway, that's, that's fine. So now we've got lots of bare soil, which you don't want. You don't really want, next to the track, grass either, because um, that grows so quickly, needs trimming, get grass all over the track. So really, you might want something that looks a bit like grass or grows nice and low and doesn't need mowing and, and too much trimming, but can resemble just, um, a, just a nice colorful landscape, different greens perhaps, and flowers aren't necessarily that important. So I've got one here, and I know actually Bodhi, we've got a lot of this 
Um, oh no, they've got a Sirene. This one is a Sagina, it's called, which looks like uh, sort of a bit mossy. And it will have little tiny white flowers, but you don't really put it in for that. Um, you put it in for ground cover because it will spread and it really does resemble a lawn. And what else have we got? Another one that you could have, which is probably very familiar to many, many is, a, is a sedum. Now, sedums, like the crassula, are what are called succulents. They've got very squishy, fleshy leaves which hold water which means they don't need a lot of water. They can really grow on practically nothing, practically no soil, um, and be perfectly happy. So ideal for many people. And they won't, won't need any watering. So this is nice and damp. There we go. Amazing roots. Now, I've got an awful lot of railway to plants. And, you know, plants aren't cheap when you're buying a lot for a large railway and as uh, Christine will tell you she planted her huge railway and what she did was to split up some plants you know it just means you're going to be patient your, your railway is not going to be instantly ready but a plant like this which, which has got really well established roots very firm it's not going to fall apart or anything you can easily split can you all see me doing that okay get your thumbs in there so long as each half's got some roots, you're okay. And again, you could do that. So you've got little pieces now of the sedum. So you can, and they will grow, if they're in sunny conditions, they've got nice gritty soil, they will grow quickly and spread. I might can put that fairly near the railway because, okay, it will grow, but it's terribly easy to pull out. In fact, birds are <coughs> pulling it out and dropping it somewhere else and you'll find it coming up all over the place. I mean, some people think, oh, it's a nuisance, but to my mind, a plant's only a nuisance if it's hard to get out. You know, if it's, if it's spread and it's easy just to pull out, then, you know, I'm, personally, I'm not bothered, really. But um, they do, again, have sort of flowers in the summer, little starry flowers, but, again, you don't really have it for the flowers. You have it for the, the greenery. So you can see how you can start... I'm splitting this one again, so just put a few bits in, and I'm going to put some in here. There's only a small space. Now I bought some other sedums from home, which are much, much bigger, and I've just pulled bits off. Can you see I've pulled them off, and there's roots there, and I've just pulled that bit off, and I can just shove that in somewhere, and it will grow. It's got roots. And again, like the other sedum, um, it likes stony, um, hot, dry, sunny conditions, so I'm just going to make sure the root, root part is covered with the compost and let that grow. And that, that obviously adds a bit more, what you might call, texture really to the railway because it's bigger, um, not as tiny, uh, the leaves and so forth, and it has more obvious flowers in the summer, yellow flowers. But this is obviously happy where I've put it because it's spreading quite well. But again, it's very easy to remove. And this is another one, which the birds obviously love, and it's popped over all over the place. This is a golden one, another type of sedum. And again, I've pulled them off. Can you see? I'm sure if you can see, they've all got little root bits. I literally just pull bits out, and I'm just going to shove them in. So one plant can produce many plants. That's the good thing about them. There we are, get those in. Anyone wants to help themselves to these bits afterwards, it's very welcome. Let's tidy that up a bit. Right. I might put this one here as well. Oh, right. I'll stop planting. Okay. This is... This is um, People often get, I don't know, muddled or whatever, call wild f weed, weeds and wild flowers. I mean, basically, a weed is a plant growing in the wrong place. So if I put a big rose bush in my railway, it would be a weed because it's the wrong plant in the wrong place. But this plant I've got here is ivy leaf toad flax, which is a wild flower. And I was given some many years ago by David's uh, mother. 
And it's, it's really nice because it's now everywhere and it grows in little cracks in walls and it somehow has got seeded, but it, it grows over uh, edges. So it's a really good plant, They're very easy to pull out. Um, it's got lovely little purple flowers. Um, so that's, that's not what I would call a weed. And we've talked about brown cover, but there's brown cover with colour as well. But this is an ero erodium, E-R-O-D-I-U-M. And uh, this flowers sort of most, most of the summer. You see what good roots that's got. So I could probably split that as well. And put, well, I'm not going to because I've only got five minutes. Um, see if I can put that next to the railway. That is this, a little bit big there. Right. Right, so if you remember, they were all well watered before they went in, but you won't do any harm by giving them a good drink once they're in. Because I've only got a few minutes, I'm not going to do any more planting. But what I would do at the end is mulch the plants. And a mulch basically is something you put on around the plants and on top of the soil, A, to hold in the moisture, and B, to um, keep the weeds down. And because it's a railway, the mulch I would use that's interesting. Can you see on the camera? There's a large slug. <laughs> Anybody who'd like that at the end is very welcome. Um, it's a grit. I've got grit or fine gravel. If you put that all around your plants, that'll keep the moisture in, and hopefully some of the slugs out, and keep the weeds down as well. Oh yes, that's the other important point, I like balance. I don't think I've got time, have I, to put all the bits and bobs on? You've got about two, three minutes. Right, any questions? I meant to say, please ask questions as I'm doing things. Has anybody got any questions? Have you, have you got a little list of those plants? Well, I don't like to advertise this sort of thing, but I've got... There is a book, there's a, book, there's a huge plant list at the, the end of the book, with... Um, every sort of plant, trees and shrubs and ground cover and so on, and their growing conditions. Oh, I've got dirty hands. <laughs> but that's it. It's, and, and Camden have got it for sale, and we've also got some other copies. So I'm not, I'm not really here to promote the book, but anyway. No, um, no, 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 no. Of course not. No, I'm not. <laughs> but, but, uh, every today, isn't it? Yeah, there's the plant list. Um, I can't put things on track very well, it's probably all wrong. I need a little man with a spade. And if there's any plants left, Bodium Nurseries have got right, some. Right, now, yes, Bodium Nurseries, they don't pay me to say this, but they are a wonderful nursery, and um, they've got a selection of some really interesting things that you won't find in garden centres, I can tell you. This little Berberis is one, this Cotoniaster, and this Larch are all from them, and this Linicera. This is my one, and uh, this Satsi fridge, which again makes lovely ground cover, but it, and it has flowers which are about that high, um, either pink or white flowers. This is a little potentilla, which is nice for colour. Now this one uh, is bodiums. Now this is beautiful, isn't it? Perfect, little purple flowers, you can get white ones, tiny leaves, but I can tell you, this is a thug. If it likes where it's living, it would just grow over everything, times, whatever else you've got. So beware, or I'd be warned. Some of these things can be um, real thugs. And there's a phlox as well, which adds a bit more texture. So it doesn't look very finished, as you can see. Um, yes, that's my one, but this is bodiums as well. So they're number 73, I think they are. And um, they have got a fantastic... Thank you, 74. And they've got a, a really good selection. And aces and things, and that you know they'll uh, they'll uh, give you advice as well if you know you're not sure what you should put where and so forth. Of all the plants you've got out, perennials that you've just put in there. Um, yes, they are, uh, which means that they'll be there. Well, the alpines, they'll be there all the time. The only thing is, if you have severe weather, they may get like something like this. Sagina could well go brown if you had really cold, frosty, but otherwise they will. They may look a bit sorry for themselves. All of these shrubs might be deciduous um, and lose their leaves, like the larch will, but otherwise they're there. They're not like perennials which disappear and you, in your flower bed and you think you know, that everything's gone. They're not like that. They're always there. And the sedums and so on. May look a bit sorry for themselves in bad weather, but... Uh, question, okay. question from me. Um, 
You said that some of the plants are like an acid soil. Mm. Um, I'm in the situation where I, I, I've got at home, I've got a heather garden, but it's in a sink, and every so often I take it all out and replant it with ericaceous compost, which is acidic. Yeah. Would that work on the, in the railway environment? Well, or? you could do it, as I was saying, you can make the art, uh, environment artificial if you want, but, but eventually, you know, um, you have to keep replenishing the soil, and yeah. also, if you, they need watering, you mustn't use the hard water that... Uh, mm comes out of your tap. Mm. You'd have to have rainwater. So basically, you know, you're creating difficulties for yourself, and, and which is fine if that's what you want to do and you're desperate to have them. But in fact, if you want heathers and you haven't got acid soil, there are winter flowering heathers which are suitable for neutral and alkaline soil. Mm. Um, would it be alright to water on the um, you know, there's a like a um, well, yeah, I know, sequestering, that sort of thing. Well, you can do that, but again, as I say, what you're doing is trying to create artificially an environment for plants that you like, you know, which maybe, you know, it's worth it from your point of view, but personally, I wouldn't do that. I always try and go with nature, if yeah. you like, and plant things that uh, fit the environment that they're in. But if you love rhododendrons and want them, and you've got uh, alkaline soil, then that's what you'd have to do. Right, so, did you have a question? Mm -hmm. Anything that rabbits don't mm. like? <laughs> um, I think you'll have to have fencing, I think. Oh, right, okay. There are a few things, but I honestly don't know, you know, exactly. Yeah, okay. no, that's well, a pain. I think the would probably be quite Yes, the Berberis, definitely. Yeah. The rabbits <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid the, uh, the planting train has hit the buffers, as you might say. We're out of time. Thank you all very much indeed for yes, coming to this Yes, thank you very much for coming. A round of applause for the people.